Welcome to the workshop. Something new came in, a real Marmite watch, kind of love it or hate it sort of thing. Without further ado, this is the first review of the Red Star GMT Bullhead. And just before we get started, I want to do a little bit of housekeeping, but you might notice that we are now cynical watch reviews. And uh, you know, I, I just saw which way the wind was blowing. And also I would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button, because uh, we're just getting to the point where if you want to see more weird stuff like this, you could really use that support. Thanks. I won't bore you with the details, but the bullhead chronograph was a real fixture of 1970s racing watches, especially. You'd have the chronograph pushers and crown up here. This is obviously not a chronograph, so I guess not so much a bullhead, more a rhinoceros, a unicorn, what have you. But the real reason here is that it's allowed Red Star to reuse their tooling of their bullhead case with the new Seiko NH34 movement. This is definitely an odd choice for a first GMT like it is for me, but you know, I, I always wanted this case and the ST19 chronograph movement, it has a place, but it's just not quite robust enough for me and especially for travel. I always wanted the bullhead case and when Seiko came out with an NH34 low cost GMT movement, it seemed like a perfect mix. Seiko making a low cost GMT movement, that was a bit of a game changer. You might recognize that movement and rotor architecture back there. But on the front, we have an extra hand and an extra time zone. Now, the one problem for me is that most of these watches so far have been homages. And that is great if, um, you know, if you're working from home or if you're sitting in an office, then a, a collar GMT works really well. But I love travel and I don't want to attract the wrong kind of attention if my watch looks like it might be a $20,000 or Rolex or $5,000 Tudor. I just don't need that headache. Speaking of cost, this watch debuted on the last sale at 180 US dollars, and it's since climbed to about 190. There are also black and blue dial variants. And uh, just to get in front of my own critique here, Dr. Jody over at Just One More Mo Watch made a hilarious review of the chronograph, and he rightfully took the piss out of some of Red Star's Chinglish marketing. But I have to point out that Red, Sm Red Star is a really small operation, basically a one-man operation. Thomas Leung is that guy. The image on the right is from an interview done by Ron Good back when touring factories was a thing before the pandemic. According to Thomas, Red Star was partly responsible for the 1963 chronograph ad. Anyways, I'll leave a link to Jody's video and that interview in the description. Nice, finally some good weather up in Canada. Now, I'm not making excuses for Red Star. I'm just stating that it's a smaller brand, so it has fewer resources than the um, factory labels that we might be used to. But the upside is we get really quirky designs like this for the enthusiast. And then the downside is that we lose a bit in terms of specifications. And my biggest regret is that this is a mineral crystal. Unfortunately, I think if it were sapphire, this would be a really popular case in the modding community, but more on that later. On the subject of this bracelet, it's included along with the strap, so I do consider it a bonus. And it is a solid construction and does have solid end links. So unlike an older Seiko 5 clasp, but it definitely has that, that flex to it, especially because of the construction where the uh, small link is in the center. It's, um, it's definitely a throwback, I'm gonna say that, like something from the 90s. The bracelet is a nice inclusion, it's a bit different. Where we do lose out, oh, by the way, you'll see that's a split pin construction. Where we do lose out is this stamped clasp. I think if we went with something like a, um, a hybrid stamped and milled, such as um, Addy's Dive uses, it, it, that covers a lot of sins. Right, so here's the other supplied strap. You can see it's in a OD green, olive drab, silicone. And I don't know, there's some reason I really like this color. I don't know what, what, it, what it is. An important point that's often overlooked with these straps is that for hooded lugs and a round case shape like this, you really do need to have a shouldered strap. So this is an 18 millimeter lug width, but it comes out to 20 millimeters. And I'm like, I like that strap. Where have I seen that, seen that strap before? Where have we seen that strap before? Like, yeah. It's the same one that's sold by Hadley Roma on Amazon here in the States. And you can also get the strap and rubber. Just thought I'd point that out. That is hilarious. It's a racing watch that's LARPing as a communist army watch. 
Somewhat controversially, the NH34 GMT function is geared to the date wheel, so or the day disc, sorry. And instead of the uh, that functionality, that's the GMT. And if you look here too, this is actually a roulette date wheel, I meaning it goes from red to black. And they had to design a new uh, date wheel for the 12 o'clock case, so might as well do something a little interesting. This is, unfortunately, a push-pull crown. And although the ads online have claimed a water resistance of 100 meters, I find that a little dubious. If anything, having the crown up here at 12 is definitely going to stop you from inadvertently hitting it when the watch is underwater. The hands are nicely finished, and a good choice in my opinion. A bit reminiscent of Omega, but with the added GMT functionality. I especially like how the little accents on the hand match the red accents on the dial. The dial of, of this watch actually really surprised me. The black, I think, is more of a matte, but the green and the blue have a slight metallic sheen to them. And I really like the green because it reminds me a bit of like a World War II pineapple bomb grenade. It's a combination where the brand name is printed, but the logo is applied, has these nice little facets too. The bezel is aluminum and it's fixed, similar to a Speedmaster bezel. But instead of a tachymeter, we have major world cities for the world time. And no doubt about this being a Chinese watch, because Beijing is very conspicuously right up here at 12 o'clock, leaving the Western world on the bottom. The diameter of 42 millimeters might seem a bit large at first until you notice that this is a tonneau or barrel shaped case. So lug to lug, it's actually very compact at 45.5 millimeters. And on a similar note, the height seems really thick at 15 millimeters, but then you realize that 20% of that is actually the bubble crystal. So it's only 12 millimeters to the top of the bezel. Again, these are 18 millimeter lugs and uh, that flares out to a 20, 20 millimeters on this strap. So you can wear it on an 18 millimeter strap, like this Boltony here, but you don't have that smooth transition to the case that you do with the shoulders. Speaking of smooth transitions, here's my final critique. And wow, I am torpedoing my ability to resell this watch. But what is going on with this case back? First, credit where credit is due. The rotor is actually laser engraved. That's really rare to see. But why C-Star and not Red Star? Especially because C-Star is an existing model line from Tizo. And what's the point of positioning this as a dive watch in the first place? It doesn't have a screw down crown and it's much closer to a racing, an aviation, a field watch. Literally any combination of the above would make way more sense. Thanks for sticking around, guys. I'm releasing the review a little bit early because this watch is actually on this week's discovery sale. So that puts it at the low end of that price point. And if you don't want to miss out on these sales, make sure you subscribe because then you'll see the videos. And I forgot to mention the case finishing is excellent. To know cases, especially bullhead cases, they look terrible when they're fully polished. And you can see the brush finish here is integrated really nice with this complicated case shape. And that's the tragic part, because to my knowledge, this is the only bullhead case that fits the NH series of movements. And with a sapphire crystal, and let's, let's be honest, a sterile case back, this would be really popular with the modern community, I am sure. So Red Star, make it happen. But what do I know? I'm just a weirdo on the internet talking about watches. Thanks again, and I hope to see you soon.